Bonjour, I'm Angela, Parisian farm girl, and today in the kitchen, I'm going to show you how to make French macarons, everyone's favorite little biscuit, everyone's favorite colorful cookie. And I'm going to show you that you can make them in your domestic kitchen with equipment that you probably already have. So let me get my apron and we'll get started. Okay, so let's talk about everything that you're going to need to make your macaron. The ingredients for macaron are not very difficult. They're made of almond flour, confectioner sugar, regular sugar, and egg whites. So those are your basic ingredients that you'll want to have. Today we're going to make, in honor of Valentine's Day coming up, we're gonna make three flavors. We're gonna make raspberry, framboise, lavender, lavande, and caramel sea salt, caramel fleur de sel. So there's a couple more things that you'll want to have on hand, and that is a 16 inch pastry bag with a number 12 tip. And I just use basic Wilt and Pastry Bags. If you're just getting started with a pastry cookie like Macaron, um, go ahead and you can buy those at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or online. They're easy to find and there are quality pastry bags that you can purchase as you become more skilled. You'll want a number 12 tip, like I said. And I use a clothespin and I'll talk about this as we go on. So be sure to have something to seal your bag on hand. Uh, a large quart jar and a small ball jar with a lid. Okay, you're also going to want to have parchment paper, and now let's talk about some of the kitchen equipment that you'll be needing. I use a KitchenAid um, stand mixer, and so you can use that. You can use a handheld mixer if you don't have a KitchenAid mixer. Don't let anything um, throw you for a loop. Try to find something in your kitchen that you can work with. And I'll be using my Cuisinart today too. You could probably use your blender, but you might need to divide the recipe in half and blend it in two different sections to get the fineness that we're looking for. Um, so I just want to show you this almond meal. It's nice and powdery. I get this from Trader Joe's. I really do like it. Uh, Bob's Red Mill also makes a really nice almond meal, but this is the one I've chosen to use. It does actually have the almond skins in it, and you may or may not like the look of your macaron with the almond skins. I don't mind. You want to cut your parchment paper to fit on your baking pan. You can make it a little bit bigger than this, but remember, think about your oven. If your oven is hotter at the back, those cookies are, are going to become more well done a little bit quicker than those ones in the front. So you want to cut a piece of parchment paper and then find something that you can trace to make a circle. This is very, very helpful. This is a step you're going to want to cut out to save time, but you will find that you'll be more happy with your macaron if you use a template. So I go ahead and I use like an old scrapbooking tool and I make circles on my parchment paper with a pencil. And then what I do when I bake is I turn that pencil, I turn the lead down so that the lead isn't baking up into the cookie. If you forget to turn your parchment paper down, the lead will show up on the bottom of your cookie. It will bake right on and it's not very attractive. So that's how you'll prepare your parchment paper. And you'll also want to have some silverware on hand um, because sometimes parchment paper can be a little bit squirrely and you can use it to lay along the edges as you're piping your cookie to keep the paper flat and that helps create a nice round macaron. So also, let's talk about this pastry bag, okay? I've got um, a 16 inch well in bag here and a number 12 tip. And what I do is I give it a twist and I clip it off with a clothespin. And that's so as I'm filling my pastry bag, it's not dripping out the bottom. And I use a ball jar because that holds it steady. So I fold my bag down and I'm using the plastic to create structure so that it stays steady because pretty soon you're going to have a big bowl and a spatula and you're going to be pouring that in. So the more stable you have this, the better.
perfect. Everything blended. One of the tricks to a successful macaron, because they can be a little bit finicky, is room temperature egg whites. So sometimes I'll crack my egg whites at the beginning of the previous evening and let them sit out just with a paper plate over the top of them overnight. It's not going to hurt anything, um, but you do want room temperature egg whites. If your egg whites are cold, if you've been asked to make macaron real quick before a party or something, you can crack your eggs and set your egg white bowl down into a bowl of warm water and within a matter of minutes they'll be at the proper temperature. So you need three egg whites for this part and a quarter cup of regular sugar and your balloon whisk on your uh, stand mixer. So we're going to dump those in and we are going to beat these egg whites until they're just about stiff. Um, and we're going to wait till they turn frothy before we add the, uh, the, the quarter cup of sugar. So I normally wouldn't stop the mixer right now, but I just want to show you what frothy looks like um, before we add this sugar. So when it starts getting a little bit bubbly, that's when I start adding the quarter cup of sugar just a little at a time. Okay, this is where I'll stop the mixer real quick and I'm just gonna add a little food coloring. We're doing raspberry framboise. So I have a little Wilton's Rose, okay? That's what I like to use. And you're gonna wanna use enough food coloring. I'm very organic and natural, but this is where I uh, make an exception. So I put a nice chunk on there and then I'm just gonna use the final stage of my egg whites to mix that. that Okay, these are great. Not too runny and not too stiff. So it's holding the egg white, okay? So I'm gonna tap that off and I'm gonna put this in the sink. We're making three flavors today, so I do recommend that you, as quickly as possible, wash your equipment so it's not too sticky for the next time. And so let's add our almond meal and confectioner sugar. Now this, it's one of the most important parts to making macaron. It's called maconnage, and it's the technique that you use when you're mixing your batter. So what I do is I'm just going to start with a little bit. And in fact, let's get rid of the blade here. And I just put a little bit in with my egg whites. Hopefully you can see me. I'm just going to mix this up just a little bit kind of get it going. Okay, and then I'm going to add a little bit more as we go. And you're trying to create a nice glossy batter. I forgot to mention this at the beginning. When you're doing your egg whites and you've set three egg whites aside in a bowl, go ahead and in another container do a half of an egg white because this is a really great um, secret thing that I use. In fact, it's from the Lauderay recipe and it's a way that they keep their batter so that it doesn't get too stiff. And I'll, I'll show you how that comes into play in a minute. So I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time as I fold this batter. So we're kind of going up and over incorporating. If you get a little frustrated, go ahead and just mix it in because it is dry. It does feel like it's never going to happen. But if you stick with it, you're gonna create a nice glossy batter that is not too runny and not too thick. But you want to be real gentle to those egg whites. So we're going under and then over the top. And when they're almost all mixed in, go ahead and add a little more. Okay, so this is about my third mixture. And it really does, it really feels like it's just never going to happen. But if you just keep going, it will. 
So we're almost there and we have just a little bit more to add. So we'll do that and then we're going to add a half of an egg white. And that's a really neat thing that you can do because um, the batter is rather, it can get rather stiff and that's why we're doing this folding and that when you're piping batter that's too stiff, um, it's going to make sort of a little whippy dip at the top of your macaron and you want them to be nice and smooth um, if you're stacking them or using them in a gift box or a macaron tower, um, a little curly cue whippy dip at the top is not what you want so that adding that half of an egg white which we'll do here in a second is a great way to keep your batter um, not runny but not too thick for when it comes to piping. So I just want to show you this texture here before we add the half an egg white. So you can see it's just about thoroughly mixed. So ideally, you're not going to want to forget like I did, but you're going to want to have this half an egg white ready. And I do like to use a ball jar because we're just going to get it a little frothy and you've already got your mixer and who wants to lug out a handheld mixer just for one half an egg white? So let's put this in a jar just a little bit, not too much, and set that egg off to the side. And uh, we're just going to shake that up till it turns frothy and we're going to go ahead and add that to our batter. A little bit more. We'll walk down here. Okay, so just like that, white bubbles, and we'll add that in. And I'm just going to kind of pour it on the edges, you know, where some of your powdered sugar is still clinging to the sides. And now we're really going to just fold that. We're going to make sure that our batter is beautiful and shiny because that is what we want. Our cookies are going to be shiny when we're done. Um, if you have a dull, flat macaron when you're done, um, you did something wrong. They are a little finicky, like I said, so we'll talk about some troubleshooting in a while. Um, but we do want a nice, glossy, beautiful batter. So that about looks perfect to me. Okay, so let's fill our pastry bag and start piping. So there are certain characteristics that make a macaron a macaron. And one of them is uniformity in shape, and that's why we used a template when we used our parchment paper. And the other is le pied, which is this little ruffle that comes off of the bottom of the cookie. Uh, we wouldn't call a big slab of bread a French baguette because we know that a French baguette has a certain shape. And so this is what you're shooting for when you're making your biscuit, your macaron. Uh, it's a little ruffled edge that's coming off the bottom. It's what gives the cookie that great look when you then sandwich it between the buttercream or the preserves or whatever your filling may be. So I'm going to show you some techniques that can help you get the exact look that you're going for. We have that structure we're looking for in our bag, and now let's fill our pastry bag with our batter. Remembering, don't forget to have that clothespin or some sort of a clip at the bottom of your bag, because then it will not leak out of the bottom before you pipe. about to get ready to the fun part. I hope that if you're watching this and you've never made a macaron or you've never had one, that you'll go ahead and try one, try to do this anyways. I remember the first time I had one. Oh my gosh, it was 15 years ago in Paris. And my poor husband, I just kept dragging him into every patisserie, every lottery shop we could find because I wanted to have as many as I could have while we were there. And then that I did that again on the next trip and again on the next trip. And now we haven't been back since. And so I decided that I need to learn how to make them myself. Over the years, I've made thousands of macarons. And so um, I'm very anxious to hear how you're enjoying this. Um, what you want to do is shake your bag up and uh, it's time to remove the clothespin and we're going to begin piping. So you have a number 12 tip, like I said, and if you'll turn your bag, and I'm just gonna assume that maybe you've never used a pastry bag before. Okay, so let's start again. You've got the bag like this, and go ahead and wrap your hand around it, 
release, take off the clothespin, give it a twist because um, if your bag is too full, and this is why I use a 16 inch bag because a 12 inch bag is just not big enough, especially if you're brand new to using a pastry bag. The batter is going to start to pour off the top if you if you release the hole that you should have. So a 16 inch bag is much easier to handle and you want to give it a nice twist. Oh, there we go. And that's why we use the clothes. You're just going to fill the circles that you've made, maybe a little over. Give it a nice squeeze with your right hand, which if you're right handed is at the top of your bag and your left hand is holding the bag steady. And don't forget your silverware on the edge of your parchment paper. Parchment paper can be a little roly-poly and um, you know depending on the humidity and the temperature of your kitchen everything affects the macaron batter. So um, yours might be a little runnier than mine, a little thicker than mine. You're going to get a feel for your own style with the macaronage you know when you're folding it in, when you're folding those egg whites into your batter. But um, the silverware is going to hold your parchment paper nice and flat so there's no uh, you know, little hills that cause the macaron to slide. And you'll see they're spreading out the little, watch here, I'm going to show you. See this little whippy dip at the top? When you use that half an egg white at the end of your folding, that helps that settle in very nicely. your batter should be nice and shiny and uh, oops, I'm at the end of the bag. This uh, recipe makes about 25 complete cookies, so about 50 halves. And now let's talk about another, I think we're just about at the end of that one. You can actually um, stick it thumb right in there and eke out any more batter if you need to. And then you can just plop it right back in the cup until you're, until you're ready for it. Um, let's talk about another really important step to get that look to the macaron, to your cookie that you, that you want. And that is letting them air dry. And so what you want is for the macaron to develop a slight skin at the top. And that takes anywhere from 10 minutes to a half hour. You know, if it's humid, if you're making these in the summer, you're gonna to wanna to cool the room off a little, maybe have a fan blowing. If you get impatient, you can bring a little space heater in, but you want it so that when you touch the top of the cookie, uh, there's a slight skin that's developed. Now, you don't want the cookie to dry completely. If you let it dry completely, the inside of the batter all the way, you're not gonna get le pied. That's not going to happen. The little foot will not create in the oven. So we're just going to leave these out. Um, I, I have found uh, in this house that about 20 minutes is sufficient, and then we'll pop them in the oven. But Mom, when can we eat them? When I'm all done. Okay? Okay. Okay, I'm going to splice in a little selfie photography because we have five children, and so hubby is upstairs changing a rather nasty nappy from a baby that woke up way too soon from her nap. And uh, she was supposed to wake up when we were done filming and we're not filming. So I'm trying to use my time while she's up there. So to fill your raspberry macaron, your framboise, uh, you'll want to use a preserve. You can use a buttercream, you could make a raspberry buttercream, but I actually like to use a preserve. I don't have any left uh, in our, um, you know, canning storage. So this is what I recommend. Bon Maman. Uh, these are my favorite preserves. I love the little jar. I love the name. Good Mama. Good Mama. So you got to use Bon Maman. And um, I'm going to go ahead and fill a pastry bag and pipe those on top of an upside down um, macaron. And then you just press them together and make your little cookie. Oh, Mama, we really love As you're getting used to 
used to making your uh, macaron, you'll find that everyone's oven's a little bit different. But mine baked very well on 325 for about 12 to 13 minutes. I just took these macaron out of the oven and they look wonderful. Now everybody's oven's a little bit different and even the tray you use is going to affect the way your cookies cook. So, um, one, 325 for 12 to 13 minutes and uh, they, they came out lovely. Now there's going to be some tutorials, maybe you've read or maybe you've seen them on YouTube where they show you that you're going to lift the parchment paper and run cool water underneath the parchment paper to release the cookie. And I don't have, I have personally haven't found that necessary. In fact, I find that rather intimidating. Um, so when your cookie is done, it's going to look fabulous on the bottom. It's not going to be brown. It's going to pop right off of the parchment paper. See, these are just lifting. They just lift right off. And in many cases, you're going to be able to reuse that piece of parchment paper. So they formed a perfect foot, le petit pied, the little foot, and they're nice and shiny. Now, let's just talk troubleshooting for a second. If your macaron uh, have an oily spot at the top, chances are, you know, if they're not uniform in color, if they almost look like there's moisture trapped underneath, ch chances are you didn't uh, bake them long enough for your oven or you did your macronage for too long, the folding technique. If they don't form uh, the little foot, perhaps you let them dry too long. Okay, so these are just, you're going to get a feel for your oven, you're going to get a feel for your baking pan, how long they need to be in, and what needs to happen to get this shape that we're looking for here. These came out wonderfully, and they're ready to pipe. For a raspberry macaron, you can make a raspberry buttercream or a raspberry frosting, um, but I just like to use raspberry preserves. I'm using Bon Maman here, and so I've got them in another pastry bag uh, with, a, with a 12 inch, or a 12, uh, number 12 tip. And I'm just going to, you can see that I've turned them kind of in a row, every other, every other. And I'm going to pipe the other. <laughs> Children are awake now. So here we have the framboise, the raspberry, and I couldn't be more pleased with the way, the way these came out. They're nice and shiny on the top. All the cookies are uniform. I did use a preserve as the filling, a raspberry preserve. Um, now let's talk about storing your macaron. So uh, you can store them in the fridge overnight, and actually at least one night in the fridge is going to really give um, the cookie an optimum taste, an optimum texture actually. Uh, you don't want them to be hollow on the inside. There shouldn't be a big puff on the top and then hollow inside. Um, this looks really good. So you can store them one, two, three, four months in your refrigerator when sealed properly in a Ziploc bag or in you know a, a gift box with a, a bag now for around your it. Caramel sea salt and your levant, your lavender, you can make just a simple frosting really. And so I use two sticks of butter and I just keep adding uh, confectioner's sugar until I'm happy with the texture. If you just want to take a look at this, this is two sticks of butter and confectioner's sugar. I'm just going to mix it up just a little bit more. Okay, now I did quite a bit there, so I'm going to scoop half of that out and set it aside to add caramel to, and the other half I'm going to add just a little purple food coloring to, and that will be the filling for our lavender macaron. So what I've taken here is some of the frosting that we just made and some of Trader Joe's awesome uh, caramel sauce for our uh, caramel fleur de sel filling. And I'm just mixing a big spoonful of that in. And then when we get all done, we'll just sprinkle some sea salt on the top of those mats and they will be absolutely amazing.
Anais is enjoying her macaron, and I hope that you'll give them a try. So remember, today we tried framboise, lavender, and caramel sea salt, caramel fleur de sel. It might take you a couple tries to get the, the feel for piping using a pastry bag and, and how they're going to cook in your own oven. But I do want to thank you for enjoying this video. And uh, we'll be back with more today in the kitchen with Parisian Farm Girl. Remember, you can follow on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and the blog. And I'll see you all soon. Au revoir. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what is in the filling? Um, caramel buttercream. Delicious, <laughs> Delicious <laughs> discrumptious. <laughs> what do you think, Juge? It's not plugged in, is it? No. no. <laughs> I feel like bad, like I feel like we've shot the prime, the majority of stuff and I haven't been funny at all. Because people know I'm kind of a cornball, you know? Mm. Are you? <sighs> well, I mean, I take... Hmm. Houston, we have a poop. So I just took these macaron out of the oven and I did mine at 325 for 12 to 13 minutes. Everyone's ovens, everyone's... Okay. Thanks, Julian. <gasps> <laughs> don't think I'm like funny enough. Sometimes my videos are funny and this one's not very funny. You ready? I'm recording.